hello, hello. I am Coach J, Mr. J, Practitioner J, and it is a beautiful day. Today, I'm going to be simply talking about um, a couple of ways to calm your limbic system. So imagine you're accelerating onto a highway, um, an on-ramp. You're about to merge onto the highway. So the end of your lane is you know, coming up rather quickly. Your left blinker is on, and you have been trying to get over um, to the other lane for about a half a minute or so. The person in the vehicle next to you continues to drive in perfect time with you. So it always seems like when you're slowing down, they're slowing down. When you're speeding up, they're speeding up. And it almost seems like they're doing it intentionally, although nine times out of 10, they're not. Um, so you've resorted to throwing your hands up over the steering wheel. Uh, you're now facing a safety issue. Although they can't hear you, you're yelling louder and louder as if by getting louder yourself in your own car will have any effect whatsoever on the outcome of this. Um, with the exception of maybe more prone to a negative outcome because now you're emotionally dysregulated. Finally, you merge uh, and the crisis is averted. But do you actually calm down? Consider the physical sensations you might be feeling in this moment. Some of the most common responses uh, for a scenario like that are, you know, tension in the fists and in the arms or the legs, accelerated heart rate, um, increased blood pressure, knots in the stomach possibly, um, dryness of the mouth, tingling of fingertips, fast and um, shallow breathing, tension in your jaws and your eyebrows all over your face because, you know, you were just yelling and screaming and maybe you're, you know, got a mean grimace on your face. Um, uh, not to mention, if you had a previous car accident, sometimes um, that could kind of trigger our previous trauma. This is all a part of the stress response. The stress response, commonly called fight, fight, freeze, although I have uh, a couple different ones. There's fight, flight, freeze, fawn, and effort. I don't mean to be um, mature, but um, sometimes people just get into this in different mode. Um, and that's what I call the effort, but whatever. Um, and the, uh, the fight or flight is from our limbic system, limbic brain. So this part of the brain is made of structures located at the brain stem and into the midbrain. It's evolutionarily one of the oldest parts of the brain, having served us well when we were much more primitive. Um, because the limbic brain is so old, it's incredibly efficient and very good at its job. It can stay fully active with a few resources, really like just oxygen, some maybe some glucose, a little bit of sugar, and it can essentially run on empty if it has to. Um, it is responsible for our survival, simply put. The limbic brain is what makes us jump out of the way of a moving car before we even register that we're in danger. It is what causes us to catch a baby when they fall before they even hit the ground. There's no need to be frustrated with the limbic brain or yourself with this response um, when this response automatically engages. Because again, this part of our body, their main function, their main job is to keep us safe, to keep us alive. Uh, we want the limbic brain to take over as immediate as possible if it thinks that we are being threatened um, because, you know, obviously there are a lot of threats in life and we do want to be safe. And so these are these are good. They're not so good when we're triggered and we're not in an unsafe place, but that's a whole nother class. If you're crossing the street and catch a glimpse of a car barreling towards you, you wouldn't want to stand in the street while you figure out if you're if you're in a dangerous situation or not. Calculating the speed and distance of the car and deciding if it's logical to react or not is not something that many of us can afford as far as time-wise. Your body is just going to react. So you want to save your life by um, jumping out of the way of the car, um, uh, but unconsciously, uh, so unconsciously your brain, brain flexes and, um, and then we simply react from that. This incredibly efficient limbic uh, brain serves us so well, it's likely the reason you are alive right now hearing about it. And this is interesting because this part of the brain um, forms very early, which is why um, a lot of times like like kids uh, will go towards a stair, but they won't they won't necessarily fall down them. Now, some kids have a very adventurous side them young, and so they will, you know, they have no fear. They'll pick up a knife, they'll fall down stairs. But um, this cautionary limbic system forms relatively young. 
it's unhelpful when we are not in imminent danger, as I just said before, especially like a trigger after trauma. Um, and then a lot of times what we're doing is we're trying to have a logical response to a physiological um, uh, re action, reaction from our brain. And that makes, you know, dealing with triggers difficult. But like I said, that's a whole nother class. Most of us react to perceived danger as though it's imminent. When the grocery clerk doesn't honor our coupons, when you hit every red light on your way to an important event, or when you read a social media post discussing a controversial topic. Even though these might be uh, pain points, they're not a good reason to engage the limbic response and tax the body unnecessarily with stress hormones and muscle contractions. So just a few quick things to do to maybe calm your limbic system. Um, <laughs> I'm going to talk about breathing, but I'm sure all of you are so tired of hearing about breathing. But breathing is one of the most predictive systems we have because it does not take um, our direct attention. Our lungs continue to cycle uh, the inhale and the exhale without deliberate thought, making it effortless, effortless and predictable. You can begin to focus your attention on your natural breathing without feeling a need to change or deepen it. Simply focus on the fact that your breath is so predictable that you do not even need to remember to do it. If you feel an urge to deepen or slow breathe along with this thought, it'll simply just add to the um, amount of resources, which is you know oxygen, that your brain um, can can continue and and succeed, you know, and, and progress with. Um, it's almost like water, like, you know, uh, uh, especially when you're triggered um, a lot or traumatized, a lot of all of your organs are working overtime to heal you, mind, body and soul and thought and this. And so, you, you know, you got to give yourself proper breathing. You got to give yourself proper hydration. So your organs are optimally functioning. Um, and a lot of times when we're stressed or betrayed or traumatized, we have these quick, shallow breaths and you're not giving your organs um, what they need to empower themselves to help heal us. Two, focus on the sensation of gravity. So gravity is possibly the most single, most familiar sensation our body knows. The gentle pull of gravity is perfectly continuous and constant to uh, an exact measurement of our entire lives. You will have gravity with you in every stressful situation you could encounter. So it's perfectly predictable. It's a perfectly predictable sensation to bring to your attention. So focus on its consistency its certainty, its constancy, um, and the incredibly familiar uh, sensation of its support. I mean, if we didn't have gravity right now, we'd all be trying to hold on to our computers while we're watching this or our phones. You can even let this familiar uh, gentle tug remind you that you can relax major and minor muscles in your body because they will still be supported. Um, you know, think about it. If, if if we were floating right now, we'd be floating up, you know, above our house, above the trees, into the skies, and that would be relatively unsafe. But, you know, one of the things to kind of focus on is, oh, you know what, no matter what, I'm here, I'm safe, I'm going to stay here. Um, and it's just, you know, something that many people don't think about, and we all take for, for granted. Number three, do an induction. You're probably saying, well, what is an induction? Um, the, it's basically neural sculpting. Neural, sculpt, neural sculpting induction consists of quieting the limbic brain and activating the front of the brain. Slightly different from meditation. This could be a five minute meditation, an extended 15 to 20 minute meditation, or even simply following the steps of induction as you go about your day. So whether you take five minutes to do a full induction med uh, meditation or simply close your eyes at your desk or in the bathroom for 30 seconds, going through the steps of an induction will calm the limbic brain, even engage parts of your brain that handle qualities like problem solving and perspective. So I don't want to get on this because I'll maybe do a class on neuroplasticity and, and uh, induction. But basically what you're doing is you're being mindful, but you're bringing certain things in while you are being mindful. Um, so, uh, you know, you're being mindful, um, or you're meditating, you're clearing your thoughts, but you're also saying, wow, that's interesting. Okay. So my chest feels this way right now, or, you know, so you're kind of bringing things in intentionally or mindfully while relaxing. Number four, acknowledge, uh, the safety and predictability of your environment. One of the things that I tell all the time when, uh, especially after people are betrayed is because they think, oh my God, there's no guarantees in life. Like if, if the one thing that I absolutely would have sold my soul on was that my spouse or partner was going to be faithful. Now, what can I count on? 
And I tell people, you know, hey, if you got to go outside and just look at the sunrise and then look at the sunset, you can tell yourself, okay, that can be counted on um, because we're just searching for what in the world could be reliable, what could be expected, because we just got slapped in the face with the unexpected. So take a moment to acknowledge and list ways in which you are safe. Notice if you're nourished enough um, to be functional, and that means hydrated, fed, slept well, uh, you're good mentally, spiritually, whatever you do as far as self-care, as far as your journaling. Um, uh, notice that you are safe enough to allocate your brain's resources to the area of the brain that can use it most effectively in this situation. So notice a few things that are happening um, around you that are predictable, which can literally be anything in your space. So um, sometimes if I, I'll talk to people and they'll be like, you know, oh my gosh, I'm, I, 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 you know, I'm just feeling like nothing is, nothing is reliable. Nothing is safe. I'll say, look at, look at a picture on your wall. That's probably been there for a few months. It's not going to go anywhere. That's simple as that. Look at your toilet. I mean, you know, I mean, I, and I know these are elementary, but when people are, especially in those very beginning stages of chaos, you need to say, oh my God, like, am, am I going to lose everything tomorrow because I just lost my grasp on reality today. Number five, imagine something novel or humorous. Now, I always say laughter is the best um, medicine. Novelty and humor are quick ways to activate the front of the brain, which pulls resources away from the limbic brain. So after performing any of these previous steps, try to think of something slightly unusual or interesting or even funny. Because really, studies show when we smile, it really does change our, our physiology. Try to visualize a cloud morphing into some most interesting shape that you can imagine. Or try to invent a new color in your mind. Or try to perform a small task with your non-dominant hand, such as writing your name or making uh, a weird hand gesture. I tell people sometimes what you can do, take your dominant hand, write down a question, but then take your non-dominant hand and answer it. Um, and studies show that we are so used to using our dominant hand that we have certain filters up. But when we use our non-dominant hand, those filters tend to come down. So we are a lot more honest and authentic. So I, you know, write a question with your not dominant hand and then respond with your less dominant hand. You might be surprised at some of your answers. Um, also, you can listen to a few minutes of your favorite comedy bit. Once you have reassured the limbic system that you are safe and allowed the, those resources to flow elsewhere, you can move through your day or situation more with ease and proficiency. Again, we're not looking for perfection, just progress. Um, one of the things I do want to say is um, I, I was only going to give five, but um, I want to add one more. I might have said this before. One of the things that happens when our uh, limbic system is triggered and our stress response is touched and fight or flight comes in, basically what happens is our amygdala gets hijacked and uh, completely clouds out the logical, rational side of our brain. So one of the things I tell people to do is, and you can do this in your head or out loud, throw out some math facts. You know, 10 times 10 is 100, 100 minus five is 95, 95 plus three is 98. Um, because what you're doing is you're engaging the logical side of things. Um, if it's all, um, if it's, if, if this helps you, I don't know, some tapping, you know, some people kind of tap, you know, and, and uh, say their affirmations. There's that Ho'oponopono prayer. I mean, there's a lot to do with your um, limbic system. But the key thing is, is to be proactive because once the limbic system kind of engages, we literally have probably about 1.7 seconds to be proactive and get a hold of it before our limbic system gets a hold of us.